gonna do math a little different, my friends watching the video. We're gonna correct our homework after. We're gonna do our notebook page first, and then we'll go over our homework. So let's find our notebook page. Fourth grade friends in class, can you give me a thumbs up if you have your notebook page? Yep. Wonderful. All right, we are going to get started on the very top part. Sometimes we have multiplication word problems. Do you remember doing some of those on your homework? Yeah. Were they a little tricky? Yeah. They were. I'm going to teach us a strategy today that's going to help it be easier, okay? This strategy is called the cubes strategy. So go ahead and write the word cubes on that blank line. Now, I don't mean like an ice cube, I mean like the word cube where we stretch it out and each letter stands for something. Let's call it an acronym, okay? The C means we're gonna circle the numbers. So I would circle that number sign there to help remind us that the C means circle. The U means to underline our question. So let's underline, underline. Underline, underline. The B means we're gonna box key words. So we're gonna put a box around key words. The E means evaluate. That's a really fancy way to say, decide which math you're gonna use. Are we going to add? Are we going to subtract? Are we going to multiply? Or are we going to divide? Raise your hand if you think you know, why did I put my add and multiply on this side and my subtract and divide on that side? I did that on purpose. Why do you think? Nathan? Um, because um, or addition is where you add and multiplication is where you also add. Where you add over and over, right? They're kind of related. And the subtraction is where you take away and then multiplication is basically I'm trying to take away. D division, I think you mean. Division. Yep, it's kind of the opposite. Their inverses, our inverses are together, aren't they? They're together. Is that what you're going to say, Amelia? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Exactly. All right, so the E is for evaluating. And the S means we go ahead and solve and check if it makes sense. That's our very last step. We're going to make word problems a breeze by using cubes. So some things we want to look for are keywords for multiplication. In our word problems, they're going to give us those keywords that we're looking out for. When we will know it's multiplication if we see the words like, um, if we see the word multiply, yeah. Yep, go ahead and write these words with me. If we see the word multiply, that tells us we definitely need to multiply. Or if we see the word multiples if we see like there are multiples that tells us we need to multiply there are a few other words too lizzie what do you think another one is times if we see the word times in the problem right like we say three times six so if we see the word times that also means we need to multiply. Holly, you think you got another one? Yeah. Not plus. Oh, no. Yep, if we were adding, then we would say plus. Another one we might see is each, like each group, right? So we might also see the word group or groups. We might see the word in all, which also is a little tricky because sometimes in all can mean addition, right? Yeah. So this one's tricky, okay? Another one we might see is if it asks for the product, right? Because we know product is the answer to what kind of problem? Multiplication. Multiplication. Or you might see as much. That's our last one. You might see as much, like um, as much in the group. Okay. So we're watching out for these words in our problems. When we see them, 
we're going to box them, what that B tells us. And so I'm going to do the first one. I want you to do it with me and watch and listen as I go through each step of my cubes. The first thing that we really got to do is read through our problem all the way. So let's read through problem number one underneath all the way. When Mary was born, she weighed eight pounds. When she was 10 years old, she weighed 10 times as much. How much more did Mary weigh when she was 10 years old than when she was born? So the first thing I need to do is my C, which is to circle my numbers. With my numbers, I also need to circle my labels because they're kind of joined together, aren't they? So I need to circle eight pounds and I need to circle 10 years old. It kind of goes off the edge. So I'm doing like a half circle around both of them. So I know that it continues. And I know 10 times as much. Okay. I'm getting, oh, but it's still one of the numbers too, right? So now I underline the question. I need to underline how much more did Mary weigh when she was 10 years old than when she was born? Now I'm looking to my keywords. Do you see any keywords in here that tell us what kind of math we need to do? Adam? It says times. And what else does it say? What's another keyword that's right by times? Ryan? It says as much. So I'm going to put a box around both of those phrases. If you want to do two boxes, you can do that too. Put a line in the middle. So we know that times as much. That tells us in our head, it's a key word that now we're on to our E, evaluate. What kind of math are we doing from those key words? Can you show me with your arms what that sign would look like? I see a lot of X's. Good. Multiplying. Good. So we know we're going to multiply. So I'm going to put that down on my bottom. Now I'm thinking through what numbers am I going to use? Because I had 8, 10, and 10. Do my 10, does my 10 years old really help us? No. Not so much. Nope. What am I going to use? Nathan? 10 times as much. 10 times as much. So I know one of my factors is times 10, right? Mm -hmm. What are we multiplying our 10 by then? Christian? Eight. By our eight pounds, right? Mm -hmm. So she started at eight, and now she's ten times as much. How much is she now? Claire? Or sorry, um, Maddie? She's 80. Do you know the label for pounds? I know we could write out pounds. Do you know what the LB? There's one more letter. LBS. LBS. I know it's really weird. I don't know why it's that abbreviation. All right, but now let's think. Did we solve our question? How much more did Mary weigh when she's 10 than when she was born? Did we solve it yet? No. We found out how much she weighs now. What kind of math do we need to do next? Rose, we need to subtract, right? Because we know she weighs more now and she weighed less when she was born, right? So what are we going to do? What numbers are we going to use next? Thomas? Um, I think 80 and 10. 80 and, and not 10, because remember the 10 tells us 10 times. It's kind of like we already used that one. 10 years. Not 10 years. Is that our weight? Isaac? You forgot? Claire? Um, eight. Our 8 pounds. We're using our weights. So we knew 80 pounds, and we also knew 8 pounds. Think which ones are alike. And we subtract to find how much more, right? 80 minus 8 would be 72. But I'm not done yet, am I? What do we know all fourth grade answers need, Alasia? Our label. And what should our label be? Pounds. She weighs 72 pounds, and an even, 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 even better label would be pounds more. 72 pounds is a fabulous answer, but the best answer we could give would be 72 pounds more. Did we circle our numbers? Yes. Did we underline our question? 
Did we box those keywords? Yes. Did we evaluate? Yes. And did we check? Does that make sense that she weighs 72 pounds more now? Yes. No. Think, she was a baby and now she's a 10 year old. Does it make sense that seven, she weighs more? Yes. Yeah. yeah, right? So just think through, like if you would have got five pounds, does that make sense that she was only five pounds more? No. No, right? And from a baby to a 10 year old to you? You weigh a little more than five pounds than a baby, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So on the right side, what we have are two more problems. Notice I also have the cube strategy across the top. So remember, if you want to circle, underline, box, evaluate, and solve to remind you of those steps in cubes. What I'm going to have you do, my friends, in class is we're going to work on problems number one and two. And we'll come back together in a bit and look over that. My friends at home, you do the same and we will um, look at it together again in a moment. All right, let's look over our work. So we should have circled our 1,528 packs of pens and 1,823 packs of pencils are four dollars per pack three dollars per pack underlined our question boxed our keyword of per pack did you get that oh, i thought it was how much boxing per pack okay. and also that how much to okay, start so to start now we need to evaluate because we found that per packed keyword, that told us we needed to multiply. What are we trying to find though? Because they gave us pens and pencils. They gave us a lot of information. Amelia? Uh, how much did the bookstore spend on pens? On pens. So which numbers are we going to use to help us then? Bennett? 1,528 and 1528 and we know we're going to use that $4, right? What does the $3 go with? It went with the pencils, didn't it? Does, do these numbers help us at all? No, yes. Do they? No, no. They don't. Sometimes they give us too much information to try and confuse us. Okay. So we know we're going to multiply. If we go through and do all of our multiplication, we should get 6,112, but that's not our full answer. What's our full answer, Zach? Um, don't we have to get the pencils also? What's, what's the question? Read through the question one more time. How much did the bookstore spend on Cash. pens? I accidentally found out how much, how much money they got. You might have found out too, but what answer yeah. do they want? They want to know the pens. pens. What's missing from this answer, though, that makes it a fourth grade answer? Adam? Our label, and our label should have been dollar sign it. And you might have said on pens or something like that, too. Brindles, nice. All right. Did you get 6,112, though? Yes. Fabulous. And the last one, Annie had six albums of stamps, so we needed to circle that six albums. And we knew each album contains 440 stamps. Only two numbers this time. Our question, though, was how many stamps does Annie have in her collection? What keywords do you see? Holly? Um, there's each. Each is one, yep. Each album. So that tells us to multiply, right? What are we going to do? We already evaluated. Now we need to, oh, you can't see that, can you? Eep. Now we need to solve. What do we, are we, how are we going to solve this problem? How are we going to solve it? Thomas, what did you and Rose do? Um, we did four, 1, 4, 440 times 6. 440 times 6, because I know each album has that 440, and she has how many of those albums? 2,000. She has how many albums? Six, Six albums. If we do our math correctly, 
then we should get 2,640. But that is not a fourth grade answer. Miss Camille, what would make it a fourth grade answer? Stamps. Stamps. For 2,640 stamps. All right, so we will correct our homework next, my friends, online. All right, so now we're going to look over our homework. So get your math book. The even numbers. Number two was 1,712. Number four was 63,648. Number six was 296. Eight was 1,600. 767. 10 was 18,994. 12 was 17,412. Or sorry, 442. And 14 was 18,615. Over here on the right side, number 16 wanted you to do quite a few steps. Okay? You needed to find out how much the onions cost, which was $94, then how much the potatoes cost, which was 580 and then or 486 and add them together to get $580. 18, you needed to do 417 times 8 to find 3,336 insects. Make sure you have the word insects as your label. And number 20, wanted you to find that tickets cost $3 each and multiply that by how many tickets were sold to find $5,157. 22, you needed to find 215 beads per bracelet and she wants six bracelets. So she would need 1,290 beads, but she has 1,500. So if we subtract, we find out she's left with that 210, because our question wanted to find how much we're left after making the six bracelets. All right, then your homework for tonight, remember, is your worksheet practicing on multiplying. Just straight up practice. You can pick either, either method. All right, let me know if you have questions. Bye.